Hi guys, it's Actual Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today I am doing a video about 10 fragrances that feature coffee. This one came by request a couple of times over the last year, so I thought, hey, why not? It's an interesting thing to have in a perfume. I think you have to really like coffee in order to want to smell like it. I mean, a lot of people like to drink it, but do you want to smell like it? I don't know. However, this list, if you know me at all, is going to be very jumbled, very mixed up, something for everyone. There are some fragrances on it that feature coffee right at the forefront where you can really feel it, and then other fragrances where it's an accent or sometimes where it's even just in the background. Uh, and there's even one kind of curveball, you know, I like to mix it up. So, without further ado, let's start the list. So the first one on the list is a fragrance that has coffee very much in your face. It is called SM Cafe and it's by Strangers Perfumery from Thailand. This one is really pushing the gourmand side of things. This one features leather underneath. There is a nuttiness to it as well. It's a real dense, thick coffee fragrance. And the perfumer, Prin, describes it as, as if the Marquis de Sade was having a cup of coffee in a sadomasochism setting. Yeah. We love the wacky stuff. But this one is if you're a coffee lover and you really want that thick, brown, syrupy, espresso type feeling right in your face. It's a great one. So that's the first one on the list. The next one is quite the opposite to the first one. It's Noah by Cacherel. Great release from 1998. This one was made by Olivier Cresp. Super famous perfumer who actually made one of the other ones in this list. That was unintentional. But this one is the dainty one. Noah is a perfume that is for people that don't like to offend other people with their perfume. This one's a heavy, heavy? No, it's not heavy. This one's a very light, white floral, lots of musk, very transparent. I think there's freesia in there. You've got some other white florals that are very, very subdued. It's airy, it's doesn't really project very well. It's like a, if, if you're a person that works in an office or if you're a nurse and you're not really allowed to wear perfume, it's a great one for people unlike me who like their fragrances to be very loud. So this one, the bottle was beautiful. I really like it, I used to have it, but it's got this added little touch of coffee in there, which is the twist because it almost kind of doesn't fit with what's going on in the perfume, but it just gives the slightest bit of an edge and a touch of something a little bit weird when you've got this setting of transparency and this pearl and it's white mask and lovely light florals and I thought it was something that I wished wasn't in the perfume, but it's worth putting on this list because Noah is very beautiful no matter how you look at it. It's a laundry type, lovely white, airy, fairy. It's kind of like that, you know, like this. So the next one on the list is Tom Ford's Café Rose. I smelled this one recently, actually, for the first time. This one's got two types of roses in it, Bulgarian and Turkish, and then coffee. For me, it's kind of all at the same level. The two roses work in tandem. You've got the metallic kind of bite of the Bulgarian rose in there, and then you've got the fluffy, airy type, bouncy Turkish rose, which is really, really sweet. And then the coffee in this is smooth. It's a little bit syrupy. It's not in your face. It's kind of very, very leveled out. And it's a really nice one. I've never really smelled rose coffee before. Maybe a long time ago, but not anything very recently. And I tried this one and I wanted to put it on the list because I think it was a very cool one. If you like roses, for sure. The next one is for the sweetie lovers out there. It's Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent also made by Olivia Cresp. By the way, if you don't know who he is, he has made so many famous perfumes. Midnight Poison, he made L for uh, Yves Saint Laurent as well, which makes sense because Midnight Poison and L are kind of related. He made Angel for crying out loud. I mean, he's, he's made hundreds of perfumes. He's one of the, the great noses or the master perfumers of our time. But this one's really sweet. Uh, they, on Fragrantica, it's described as an oriental vanilla, but to me, it's really not an oriental. It's more like a fruit chuli. So you have loads of vanilla, loads of patchouli, you have a very distinct pear note to it, and then you have coffee, which is what this video is about. This one to me is hyper sweet, so if you like your gourmands, 
Uh, I found it quite strong when I tried it for the first time, which was quite a few years ago, but I remember being able to pick the coffee out quite distinctively. This isn't a fragrance where it's in the background. So syrupy, fruity, it's like vanilla soaked pears with coffee. And it's kind of cool, but not something I would wear, but it's one for you gourmand lovers. The next one is also by Strangers Perfumery and it's called Burning Ben. This one is another one where coffee is right at the forefront, but it goes in a different direction to SM Cafe that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. This one is about a Korean art house film called Burning, which I've never seen, but I'm told it's really, really cool and gruesome and just, there's loads of death and stuff in it. But there's a scene in the film between the protagonist and the antagonist, and it's in a coffee shop. So this one's more focused on woods though. It starts out very, very coffee-like, but to me it kind of almost dries down oody a little bit. There's no oud listed in it as a note, but uh, this goes woody where the SM Cafe one goes more gourmand nutty. So another great one from Strangers Perfumery, kind of up and coming brand. Prin is a rising star in the perfume world. He's made some amazing things that I own and love. So burning Ben. The next one is the curveball. I always like to throw a curveball into the mix when I do these videos. And this one's called Close Up, and it's by Olfactive Studio from France. It's a brand where all of their photographs, uh, photographs? All of their perfumes are based on photographs. <laughs> this one is actually a fragrance that features green coffee. So, coffee before it's roasted. If you didn't know already, I know it's kind of obvious, but I just thought I'd mention it anyway. This one's actually a big tobacco. This is a very smooth, sweet tobacco fragrance. It's almost like hookah pipe, or shisha as we call it in the UK. Shisha pipe tobacco. There's a cherry note in here. There's spice. You have this green coffee. And then the twist is kind of an animalic, leathery base. So it's smooth and sweet and interesting, but then it's got this, it almost smells horse-like to me weird one, but still wearable. So that's one that's a curveball because of the green coffee element. So check that one out if you care to, and I'll move on to the next one. The next one is a recent addition to my collection. It's called Bokeh Maasai, and it's by Pierre Guillaume, formerly known as Parfumery General, but he's just changed it to Pierre Guillaume now. It's 10.1. This one I love. It's so cool. It's a peony fragrance. So Let's quickly talk about peony, because peony in perfume is never real. Peonies are not distilled, so it's always that particular perfumer's interpretation of how they want to display or put forward how peony smells. Some people think they smell great. We had one where I work recently, and I thought it smelled horrible. I didn't like it at all. I'm sure there's lots of varieties, but the one I smelled smelled like dirty pond water. But this one's a kind of effervescent pink peony floral and the coffee is underneath it's like an underlying element of it and it kind of without sounding negative kind of drags the flower down a bit it kind of grounds it and gives it this edge of something that's kind of bordering on unpleasant but it works it's a very weird combination i think putting coffee and flowers is just Coffee to me belongs in things with woods and tobacco and maybe spice and things like that, but this is another floral coffee, which kind of like Noah, where it almost feels like it doesn't fit, but I love it. It's got a bright, bouncy, effervescent sweetness with a dark brown roastedness underneath. Roastedness. Never said that before. The next one on the list is called Awake, and it's by a brand called Acro. I think they're kind of unknown at the moment. Uh, Olivia Cresp made this fragrance as well. I think he really likes coffee. <laughs> but this one I've got on my hand right now, actually. It's a very simplistic one. It's only got four notes, uh, so, so I'm told. It's lemon and cardamom, coffee and vetiver. So this one to me kind of plays with dark and light. This one is where you have coffee at the forefront. You can really smell it straight away, but then it's kind of lightened with a citrus. So cardamom, bright green kind of note. Sometimes it feels citrusy in perfumes to me. And that's just my nose, because my nose is weird, sorry. But yeah, it's a kind of simplistic linear one that it doesn't shout too loud. It's not an in your face coffee and it's not a very strong fragrance, but it's interesting to have lemon and coffee together. 
I think it's perfume a challenge, you know, trying, because I think coffee's kind of uncombinable with things like that, but I think, I feel like they're trying to do it. Let's put coffee with flowers. Let's put coffee with lemon. It's not something you would ever drink together, you know? So, that's that one. So, the second to last one on the list is Follow by Kerosene, a brand that I like, but I feel like the fragrances are hit and miss. This one was a really lovely one though, and it is one where coffee is very much at the forefront. This one also has maple sap in it, it has tonka, it has vanilla, it has amber, so this is the one that pushes it more to the sweet side. Uh, this one was really rich. His fragrances are strong, they really last a long time. It's John Pegg, who used to be a blogger, who now has his own line. Congratulations. I really love Dirty Flower Factory by him, by the way, it's really, really cool. But yeah, this was one of the first fragrances I tried where I got blasted in the face with coffee and it was a bit of a shock, but again, gourmand, sweet, lovely, ambery, tonka, coffee, smooth. And the last one on the list is one that I think is just about to be launched uh, worldwide when it was a Florence exclusive. It's a fragrance I got at the very end of the year last year. It's called Confetti and it's by Lush. This one is a really bizarre one that I have grown to love. Prominent coffee, but I would say it's middle level. It's not the main star. It's prominent enough. It's not background, but it's not forefront. This one is set in the company of Violet Leafs, and it's a green, powdery, comforting type smell that is almost kind of dusty and floaty, but then you have coffee, again, coffee and perfumes, when it's placed at that level, it's like a weird twist. It's like something that's unexpected and strange, and I really like confetti. I wore it uh, quite a lot over a week, and I doused myself with it just to bathe in its green, foresty weirdness. Confetti also has rose, pear, and sandalwood, but the main star of the show is the violet leaf here, and if you haven't smelled it before, it's, it's a tricky one to describe. It kind of smells like violet, violet-y in some weird way, but just the darker side of violet, you know? It's the leaf, it's the it's really earthy and strange, but, but yeah, the, the added coffee twist is definitely unusual. And that is my list. So, I hope you like this list, hope you like this video. Uh, I'll be back soon with something else. I think I'm gonna do a spotlight video next on a really exciting company that I got samples of. So look out for that one. For now, I'm out from Mono, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. See you guys soon, goodbye.